It's the writing on the wall. What in the world am I talking about? And what does it mean? It's ancient and it's in the Bible. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Ember. I'm Janice. And this is Bible Discovery TV, going through the Bible. It's our 31st year of doing it. And this is an interesting thing today. The writing on the wall comes from the Bible. What does it mean? We'll talk about it. Corey and Ryan are here, Corey. All right, I am taking a look at the man, Daniel, from the Bible, as well as the book as a whole. Ryan? What does it mean to be a friend of God or to be beloved of God? Well, this very important question is something we're gonna try and answer on today's program. All right, beloved of God. Daniel's mentioned that way, very interesting. Jen? Today's our Fun Friday wrap up. I've got a lot of people watching at home that like to play along with us. I'm going to pose a question anywhere from our readings in the past week from Ezekiel chapter 37 all the way through to Daniel 6. Daniel 5, verses 13 through 30. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah, whom my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard of you, that the Spirit of God is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation. But they could not give the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you, that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gifts be for yourself, and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king, and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar your father a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. And whomever he wished, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. Then he was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beasts, and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of men and appoints over it whomever he chooses. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this, and you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives and your concubines, have drunk wine from them, and you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know and the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the inscription that was written. Mini, Mini, Tekel Upharsin. This is the interpretation of each word. Mini, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Pires, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. 
Then Belshazzar gave the command, and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. Daniel chapter 5, verses 13 through 30. And today we read Daniel 5 through 6. This is really interesting. The ways of God are often forgotten by the next generation. Have you noticed that? And Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9 explained the importance of parents communicating who God is and the teaching of his laws, the laws of God, to their children. The family of Nebuchadnezzar did not follow what the king had discovered about God. Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belshazzar, inherited the throne, and he was foolish. He played with the sacred gold objects from the temple of God, though they had been anointed for God's use only. The Babylonians had been allowed to capture them and now violated them. Supernatural writing appeared on the wall at Belshazzar's banquet, and none of the chief magicians or any of the people there could interpret it. The queen mother, however, remembered Daniel, who was about 80 years old now, and told her son that Daniel could interpret what the magicians could not. So Daniel was brought in, and the message from God was read in all who were there. Now that's very, very important. How is that possible? How is it that somehow Daniel could be the one to read this? That's very interesting. As we think about this today, we're going, we have a long uh, read, and so we're going to be careful to hear God. Father, I pray today as we begin to look at the writing on the wall and what this means to us that you are today watching and you are today paying attention and you are today active. So help us, Lord, to stay close to you. In Jesus' name, help us to read and understand what you're saying here. And we said together, Amen and amen. Now look at this, Daniel 5, 13 to 17. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel who is one of the captives from Judah, whom my father the king brought in from Judah? I have heard you and that the spirit of God is in you and that light and understanding and his excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men and the astrologers have been brought in before me and they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation, but they could not give the interpretation of the thing. And I have heard of you that you can give interpretations, Daniel, and explain enigmas. Now if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you, shall be clothed with purple royalty and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Well, then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. Oh my goodness, this is really interesting. The king was desperate to know the meaning of the message. God gives his divine wisdom and knowledge to the one or to all who seek after him and obey his word. God teaches his people how to read and understand the Bible, teaches his people how to know and understand the situation they're in. So there may be wisdom if you are blessed and ask God for wisdom. Proverbs 3 says he gives it to you. If, if you are asking for wisdom, God will give you supernatural wisdom, which will be above everything else. And that's exactly what happened here. Now let's go back and let's understand what happened because this is important. Daniel chapter 5, 18 to 23. Listen carefully. O king, Daniel says, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, a kingdom and majesty. Did you hear that? The Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar, 
your father a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. And because of his majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Who never, or whomever he wished, he executed. Whomever he wished, he kept alive. Whomever he wished, he set up. And whomever he wished, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. Then he was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys and they fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high God rules in the kingdoms of men. The most high God rules in the kingdoms of men and appoints over it whomever he chooses. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all of this, and you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of, this, of his house before you, and you and your lords and your wives and your concubines have drunk from the wine from them, and you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or do not hear, do not know the God who holds your breath in his hands and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Point number two, Belshazzar was reminded of his father's prideful downfall. Now, beloved, we must always remember that all glory, praise, and honor must go to God most high, not to us. We watch television and we see a man on television. I'm like him. No, 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 no. That man should point you to the cross, to Jesus Christ, to the Bible. And if he does, praise God. Read the Bible. If he does, build your relationship with God, not with that man. Very important. Very important right now. Let's go back to the scripture, 24 to 30. Then the fingers of the hands were set, or sent from him. And this writing was written, listen carefully. And this is the inscription that was written. Mean, mean, tekel, a parson. This is the interpretation of each word. Mean, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed and in the balances and found wanting. Perez. Your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. And then Belshazzar gave, gave the command and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck. Watch this now. And made a proclamation concerning him that he should be third ruler in the kingdom. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Verse 30, watch this. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was killed. That very night, the city of Babylon was taken over. It was gone. That's it. It was over. We need to understand that's important. Now, what's the point? God ended Belshazzar's kingdom that very night. We must keep our hearts and attitudes right before God. Our hearts and our attitudes must be right before God. We are humble people. We do not build ourselves big things. We give all the glory and the honor to God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Our life is renewed by Jesus Christ. We're renewed by him. You see, we live differently than we did before. Before we met. Who? Before we met Jesus Christ. That's who.
So as we continue to study through the Old Testament book of the prophet Daniel, you and I are going to be taking a look at his life and his ministry specifically, Daniel, that is. And then we're also going to be looking at the book as a whole. I find it helpful to do this occasionally as I'm reading through because I know, especially when we get into the prophets, you can feel a little bit historically lost or a little bit lost on the biblical timeline. So let's figure it out together. The biblical figure of Daniel was a young man when he was taken with other young Judean noblemen to Babylon, a type of tribute from the newly subservient nation of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, was an empire builder who built his impressive court of nobles by his conquests. Nebuchadnezzar would attack Judah once more, again taking captives, before his third and final attack that would crush a Judean rebellion and destroy Jerusalem. After three years of Babylonian education under his belt and with a new Babylonian name, Belshazzar, Daniel distinguished himself as a critical member of Nebuchadnezzar's court by interpreting dreams of the king when no one else could earning him the title of chief governor of the so-called wise men of Babylon and ruler of the province of Babylon. These roles apparently had staying power, or at the very least earned Daniel enough tenure to be respected and taken care of through the reigns of a few more kings of Babylon. During the co-heir reign of Belshazzar, Daniel was called upon to interpret the famous vision of the handwriting on the wall, meaning that Daniel was there in Babylon on the fateful night it fell to the Persian army. Assuming a modest age of around 15 for Daniel when he was taken to Babylon, he would have been about 80 years old when Babylon fell. But his story did not end with Babylon. The victorious Persian king needed to reorganize his conquered territory and Daniel landed a job as an administrator over the newly appointed governors. This, however, led the way to perhaps the narrative that immediately calls to mind a brave, faithful Daniel, the lion's den. Charged with disobeying an order of the king, Daniel was sentenced to death. This man in his 80s was lowered into a pit of lions that were kept hungry for this very purpose. Miraculously, Daniel survived an entire night. Neither man nor lions were hurt, and a relieved Persian king was able to pull his administrator out of the den. So there we have it. There is a lot more to cover when it comes to the Old Testament book of Daniel and his role within the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar and also within the kingdom of ancient Persia. There's just so much historical meat there. We're going to continue working on it as we study through the Bible this year. Yeah, yeah what's interesting is Daniel starts with the basic you know, miracles when he was young. Mm -hmm. And then he ends, it's very, chapter 12, 11 and 12 are fascinating, mm -hmm. I'm telling you. And uh, it's, I mean, he gets sick. He sees the future and he gets sick. God shows him things that, you know, again, Daniel's another guy that I'm gonna meet in heaven. I wanna meet Daniel and that's fascinating. <laughs> so anyway, uh, all right, Ryan, go ahead. Yeah, well, my segment today is called My Friend, My Beloved because there are a few people in the Bible God openly calls his friends or his beloved. And actually the prophet Daniel, as dad mentioned, is one of them. But the earliest example of someone being called the friend of God is Abraham. So we're going to trace this through the Bible, and we also want to discover what it means to be a friend of God or to be beloved of Him. So let's study. Abraham has many titles in Scripture, but perhaps the most notable and significant is friend of God, a title by which he's called no less than three times in the Bible. These include 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 7, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8, and in the New Testament, James chapter 2, verse 23. It is interesting then that Hebron, which is one of the main places Abraham lived and where he was buried, is a Hebrew name which means friend. In fact, even when the Arabs later took it over, they renamed it to its Arabic name, El Halil, meaning the friend. According to the scriptures, being a friend of God is no small thing. In fact, part of the close friendship relationship is disclosure of the future. This can be seen in Genesis chapter 18, where God and two angels pay Abraham a visit. Privately, God asks the angels a rhetorical question. Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? The obvious answer was no. 
Another instance where God disclosed the future to Abraham is through the offering up of Isaac in Genesis chapter 22. Indeed, some have supposed that Abraham wanted to know how it was that God would bless all the families of the earth through his seed, as promised in Genesis chapter 12. Thus, it is conjectured that our Lord designed a way to teach him, through an experience, what he had already communicated to him in words. He was given a prefiguration or a type of the sacrifice that the last in the line of the seed, that is Christ, would accomplish. At the very least, Abraham knew he was acting out a prophecy, because he named that place Jehovah Jireh, meaning in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. This concept of disclosure being linked to friendship with God is also consistent into the New Testament. Jesus declares to his disciples in John chapter 15 verse 15, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. One step beyond being a friend of God is to be beloved of God, and there are only two people in the entire Bible who are given such a title. The first is the Old Testament prophet Daniel, who is called beloved three times in his book. And the second is the New Testament disciple John the Apostle, who is famously known as the beloved disciple. It is of no insignificance or coincidence then that Daniel and John are the two greatest sources of prophetic revelation in the Bible, Daniel with his book and John with revelation. Because of their faithfulness and obedience, God disclosed revelation to them not given to any others. Thus we observe not only a consistency between the Old and New Testaments, but also, and more importantly, within the nature of God. You know what excites me the most about this is that you and I as followers of Jesus Christ are also considered to be friends of God. And if you doubt that, then I want to remind you that he's also disclosed the future to me and you. He's done it through his word, the Bible. And if you, you're truly a believer, then you take his word seriously, or at least you should be taking his word seriously. And if you do, then you'll understand that God has graciously laid out his plans for the future right here in his word. You know, I wonder what would happen if people truly and really understood that the Bible is the very word of God and revealed to us his plans for the future. Well, I suspect that this least read bestseller would become the most read bestseller, and that's something to aim for. So let's take the Bible seriously and seek out God now while he can be found in this time of grace. You know, one of the things that's interesting is a lot of people said to me about my father, they said, I love your dad because he uses the word beloved. And there have been many people who've said, yeah, nobody ever has used that word before. And I, I kept telling them, well, if you, if you read the Bible, actually, mm -hmm. yeah, they do. Paul uses the word. Peter uses the word. I mean, uh, the difference is that God uses the word to identify Daniel. But in the New Testament, Peter and Paul use the word to identify us. Mm -hmm. So very, I very, find that yeah. fascinating. Suddenly it turns and we are the beloved of God. And that's the shift that you see in the New Testament. Absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. And by the way, we are on a, a, a network. We're a brand new. You don't know this, but I'm telling you now. <laughs> uh, I got the phone call uh, two days ago, and we're on the Australian Christian Network twice a week at 1030. And I think one of the other times is 11 o'clock in the evening, 1030 in the morning and 11 o'clock in the evening. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? You know, the yes. amount of times that we find out things <laughs> around this around table. This, yeah, on just the on air. here. Just no, no pressure. <laughs> you, gotta, you know, go with it. That's yeah. great news. <laughs> Excellent. And that's that's the best times we've ever had on that great network. And that's the Australian Christian Network, Wonderful. coast to coast in Australia. And uh, Mike Jeffs is excellent. And uh, Praise he's God. just a wonderful mm -hmm. guy. God. And uh, so anyway, we've got a, I've got the information. I've got to get it to DJ He's over on that camera. And we're uh, all just finding it. Finding it live. That's right. Here well, we go. I, I found out I, I've been working mm -hmm. on this for a month. All right. So I didn't say it, but now I'm saying it. So <laughs> anyway, Great. that's good. Corey. Yes. What are you doing this weekend? <laughs> oh, okay. So here at Bible Discovery, we're reading through the Bible this year. We do it every year, January to December, Genesis to Revelation. But 
One of the problems is that it is a fast and rigorous reading schedule. So if you are having trouble with the reading schedule, if you're falling behind, then Saturdays, these weekends are for you. My YouTube channel, uh, just called Corey Babechko on YouTube, I do a chapter by chapter weekly recap of the assigned reading with the goal of getting you caught back up so that you can continue studying through the Bible with us. That's very good. And I look forward to that uh, because the, the, it's just excellent. Um, we've got to figure out how to get that on Bible Discovery TV, the 24-7 streaming thing. We'll work it out. Yeah, we got to get that going. Anyway, very good. It's good. You have a lot of people that join along, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It's, re it's very fun for me because YouTube enables me to have a little bit more of an interactive platform. So I'll post the video on a Saturday morning and then people comment and question and I'm able to answer some questions and comment as well. And in the future, we're looking forward to doing some live Q&As and things of that nature. That's for the future. That's really, really exciting. <laughs> Which you'll announce in front of us all at the table. At, when, <laughs> it like your father when it happens. When it happens. I'm, that's just the way I am. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Jen. What's well, our question? All right. It is our fun Friday wrap up. I'm going to ask a question anywhere from our readings from Ezekiel chapter 37 through to Daniel chapter 6. All right. Nebuchadnezzar was so angry with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he demanded that the fiery furnace be heated how many times more than usual? Three times hotter? Five times hotter? Seven times hotter? What do you think? It was hot. In fact, it was so hot that some oh. people were killed throwing right. them in Just there. Just putting them in there. Mm -hmm. You know, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. We're, we need, like, uh, we're not too sure on this. We don't have our Bibles in front of us. We right do now. not. We're, we're trying to do this off uh -huh. the cuff Some here. Some memory work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we had thought maybe seven. Yeah, we when we, we were we were thinking about it, we kind of gave each other eyes like yeah, maybe yeah. seven. Yeah. Because that's very extreme and he was an extreme very dude. Very extreme guy, yeah. Nebuchadnezzar was extreme, I'll tell you mm -hmm. right now. That's why I want to meet him in heaven too. <laughs> anyway, I'm telling you. It's a good well, thing if we he's have in forever. Heaven, well, I I don't know. It's what a good thing we have forever? Because yeah. there's a lot of people you want to. Should we just oh, go for it? And yeah, see what it is. you know what? Let's just go. For we're it. going for it. We're rolling. We're we're just gonna throw it in there. You're gonna seven. go for seven times hotter. Well, I don't know what you answered at home, but Daniel chapter three verse nineteen says this. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed to where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. So if you said seven, good job. Excellent. Yay. Good job for you at home. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, seven was pretty extreme. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the program, we end up praying, and that's a great place to be. After we read the Bible and study it, we pray. One of the things we can start praying is this. This is important. Lord, I praise you for saving my soul. Thank you for everything you've done. And we ask, Lord, in Jesus' wonderful name that you draw me closer to you. Help me to serve you with all my heart, mind, and soul. In Jesus' name, and we said together, amen.